your stats. You want to, maybe you want to do it. It's an honor. <laughs> okay, welcome all of you. Um, we have uh, today started our informal uh, meeting in uh, EBSCO. Um, we have had uh, some uh, different meetings uh, already now. Uh, and um, I would like to say that we have started up with a tripartite uh, meeting with our social partners discussing how to fight problems with uh, uh, youth unemployment. And I think uh, it's quite clear for everyone that all over Europe we are facing uh, a very difficult time. Um, all member states have face, are facing problems with youth unemployment and um, we have today with our social partners on the European level discussed how to fight uh, the youth unemployment. Uh, and um, for the rest of the day uh, we're going to have some different workshops and uh, at least Ando and I are going to focus on fighting youth unemployment and we're going to spend uh, the rest of the day, the afternoon, uh, in discussing different methods um, using in the different member states. Um, so um, for the rest of the day, um, the Minister of um, Employment, we're going to use all our energy uh, in focus on how to fight uh, youth unemployment. And uh, I think it's quite clear for everyone that uh, in Denmark we have a strong tradition uh, for social dialogue, um, for having the social partners close to the political discussions and solutions. And of course, I'm uh, strongly recommending this uh, system for my colleagues all over Europe. So I think it's, it's quite obvious that, uh, of course, an informal meeting uh, in EBSCO have to start with a social dialogue and uh, in involving uh, the social partners. Another topic we're going to discuss today is social services under pressure. And of course, in a time of crisis, it is very important to discuss how can we do things better. But also, or not only because we do have a crisis, but also in, in, in the case that we would like to improve the benefits and the help that we provide people. We would like to actually achieve the goal we have when we, have, when we talk about social politics. And the goal is, of course, to help people to actually change their lives. So instead of just talking about what services do we normally provide, also talk about how can we make sure that the services that we do give people actually can help them to make change their lives and to achieve the goal that they can have a better life. Also, when we had, are discussing the, uh, the development in Europe with the demography, uh, this is also a very important question. So today, as Meta says, I have also had a meeting with the social platform and now we're going to have workshop meetings and there will be no formal conclusions, of course, because it's, it's an informal meeting, but uh, we have had a very good start and it's a very exciting agenda and it's, it's, it's on a good roll. Well, let me start by congratulating the two ministers for organizing this uh, very important uh, meeting of European ministers and um, I, I would like to uh, tell you what the European Commission is doing in these two areas uh, focusing on youth unemployment uh, in the current very difficult situation and also on social services. As you probably know in December the European Commission adopted a youth opportunities initiative and uh, we wanted to have a European framework but also to focus with tailor-made strategies on the countries where the youth unemployment is the highest and we sent eight action teams to these countries mainly in uh, southern Europe but not exclusively in order to see what needs to be done differently and these action teams have summed up their conclusions and we will draw conclusions uh, uh, in practice uh, very soon uh, we reported in writing uh, to the ministers and, uh, and uh, these proposals will affect uh, many issues including reallocating European funds, particularly the European Social Fund, creating apprenticeship, boosting uh, entrepreneurship startups for uh, young people, but also improving uh, education and training opportunities. Uh, participation in uh, schooling is also key to prevent early uh, dropouts. All this has both in the short run and in the long run strong implications on youth opportunities and 
and youth employment. Um, there is a connecting point with our youth agenda and the employment package which the Commission adopted last week in Strasbourg. Because with this employment package, which is about the job rich recovery, we also specifically target the young people by launching a consultation on uh, a quality framework for traineeships. Because this has been one of the mm. most sensitive. Uh, areas uh, where a lot of controversy, um, a lot of bad practices unfortunately prevailed in various uh, member states. So we would like to invite all parties who are involved, who are interested to discuss this and uh, help the Council to draw conclusions before the end of this year. On social services, indeed, this is an extremely tough question at a time of fiscal consolidation. Uh, fiscal consolidation puts a pressure on social services in every single uh, member state. Uh, so this is on the one hand a financial issue, on the other hand it is also a legal issue. The Commission had to take care of the legal framework, especially in the context of state aid, um, to allow social services to continue and improve functioning and also what concerns the quality. Quality and access uh, are key uh, questions when we discuss social services and uh, this is for us particularly relevant because the Commission has to implement uh, an anti-poverty strategy in the European Union but I would also add that it's not only a question of poverty it's more generally uh, a very important issue for citizens to have uh, accessible quality uh, social services for the sake of social cohesion and to maintain what we call the European social model. Thank you. Question, if I may. Sorry. Uh, Raymond Lloyd, the editor of the Parity Democrat, Westminster. It's good that this meeting faces the problem of youth unemployment. Happily in Britain, this has fallen by 9,000 since November, whereas women's unemployment has just risen to 1.14 million, the highest for nearly 25 years. In particular, professional and other women over the age of 45 find it hard to obtain jobs. One solution seems to be the start-up of women's enterprises. Is this a challenge which the EU ministers will take up? I would like to start by saying that I think it's a very uh, interesting uh, discussion and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, this is also a question that is going to be tackled. But today we are focusing on youth unemployment and I have to say even though it has gone down in Britain and I'm very happy about that, we can see all over Europe that the problems with youth unemployment are quite stab stable unfortunately. So also both concerning the southern part of the uh, European Union uh, and, and, and many other places, we have to stick to our program today focusing on youth unemployment because I think all of us are afraid that if we are not if we, if we are not able to find solutions to this problem, then we are in the risk of losing an, an entire generation or at least a big part of it. So today, all our energy is going to put it, being put in that discussion. Well, because it's not in today's discussion, I would like to make just two short comments uh, because it's indeed an important issue. Um, in this employment package, which we adopted last week, we say we would like to see dynamic and inclusive uh, labour markets in the European Union. And both has a gender implication because very often, like uh, in the case you said, uh, the labour market is not sufficiently dynamic for women because there are glass ceilings and promotion and progress in the career is not available in the same way as for men in many cases. So these glass ceilings, these uh, sometimes visible, sometimes <coughs> invisible constraints have to be uh, addressed. And the point of inclusiveness is also very important because there are uh, a few member states where the women's employment rate is less than 50 percent. That's Italy, that's Ireland, that's Greece, that's Malta. Uh, I don't think we can continue like this. I think in all these countries and also in other ones we have to see uh, what uh, opportunities can be created for women who would want to participate uh, and uh, we should see by what instruments we can encourage and support this. Okay, other yeah. questions? Um, I would like to maybe ask a question in Danish, if that's okay. <laughs> I'm from Ritza, and I'll just move a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, it's just because I need to use the sure. sound for a radio station. So, yeah. Um, I skal tale om ungdomsarbejdsløshed i dag, men hvad kan 
EU reelt gøre? Er det ikke et anlæggende for staterne? Kan EU reelt gøre noget for jeg er i tvivl om, at det at bekæmpe arbejdsløshed og i det hele taget føre en aktiv beskæftigelsespolitik, det er et nationalt anlæggende, og jeg tror sådan set, at alle de europæiske regeringer er enige om, at det er et nationalt anlæggende. Så man kan sige, at det vi bruger dagen i dag til, det er at få det på den politiske dagsorden, fordi det er et vigtigt emne, men også til at kan man sige, altså diskutere best practice. Hvad er det, man kan foretage sig i de enkelte medlemslande? man kan se, har en, en effekt og en positiv virkning i forhold til, til ungdomsarbejdsløshed. Og så man sige, kommissionen har, som vi lige har redegjort for, altså kommet med initiativer til beskæftigelsespolitikken i det hele taget. Så man kan sige, vi står hele tiden i en balance mellem, at det er et, et europæisk anlæggende forstået på den måde, at hvis ikke vi får løst problemerne med ungdomsarbejdsløshed, så er det jo en potentiel bombe under hele den europæiske økonomi. Men det er selvfølgelig et nationalt ansvar at sørge for at bekæmpe arbejdsløshed og at drive beskæftigelsespolitikken fremad. Hvis EU reelt kan gøre noget ved det her problem, hvorfor har det så fået lov til at eskalere så vidt? Altså, vi har været igennem og er sådan set stadigvæk i en rigtig, rigtig svær økonomisk situation og krise. Og når man er i så svær en situation, så har det også en negativ effekt i forhold til ungdomsarbejdsløshed. Jeg skal ikke gøre mig klog på, hvad, hvilke beslutninger man har truffet i de enkelte lande. Jeg kan, jeg kan sige for Danmarks vedkommende, at der er den gruppe, der har den højeste ledighed, det er de unge ufaglærte, som ikke fik taget en uddannelse i, i tide, og derfor kan man sige fremadrettet synes jeg, at det danske svar i høj grad skal handle om uddannelse til dem, der ikke har fået uddannelse, og til for eksempel jobrotation for dem, der har en uddannelse, men som mangler noget konkret erhvervserfaring. Der har været forslag frem, om man skulle stille en ungdomsgaranti, at EU, det danske EU-formandskab skulle bruges til at få stillet en ungdomsgaranti. Er det noget, I vil arbejde videre med? Altså, det er noget af det, vi kommer til at diskutere i dag, fordi at en række af medlemslandene er optaget af en ungdomsgaranti. Der er også lande, der er imod. Så øh, vi er faktisk ikke gået i gang med dagens diskussion for alvor, og nu får vi se, hvordan den udvikler sig også, hvad angår en ung garanti. Any more questions? The last one, the time is... Okay. Peter Rasmussen, Free F Media. This is both for Mr. Ander and uh, Mrs. Frederiksen. Uh, the, the new employment package uh, from the European Commission has created some fear in the European Trade Union Congress about these labor reforms that they may force young people and unskilled labor into more precarious jobs, unsafe jobs. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, in order to prevent this uh, development? I heard the representative of the ETUC this morning in our discussion and uh, it was a lot more positive than what you are uh, quoting. So in fact uh, this employment package is about creating opportunities also for the young people, not necessarily in their own home environment because uh, the reality in contemporary Europe is that very often young people should look around in, in other regions, in other member states and we would like to help them. We want to make the European labour market more transparent. Uh, indeed, unfortunately, there are regions with excessively high unemployment, but there are other regions which are more dynamic and offer a lot of uh, vacancies, and this should, be, uh, uh, this should be possible for us to match. I think the Commissioner has answered it already. Yeah. Okay, we have to start up at 2 o'clock, so okay. Thank you. Thank you.